Now we have to start work on the steam boxes and what I've done is I've prepared on the lathe two blanks like this which have machined the ends and drilled out and reamed out the holes which extend almost to the very end of the tip here and uh, then on the mill on the second piece I've already taken uh, milled off the sides and all that has to be done now is to mill out the interior and uh, drill the holes in the corners so that they will fit there and uh, of course the other thing is they both have to be precisely the same thickness in this direction so that the one piece cap with the steam or compressed air inlet will be able to clamp them both in place without any gaskets. So well, anyway that's the idea and I think so far everything seems to have worked so I'm hoping that uh, that's the next job and after that obviously I have to make the tiny little valves and the valve uh, adjustment, the nuts, and then connect them to the push rods. After that, just the linkage for the reversing gear, and so you can see, oh, the more I do, the more I figure, ooh, there's an awful lot left to do, but that's the way it works. These are the steam chest blanks. One is in the vise, all done except for the inside milling out. The holes are drilled, this end of course is uh, reamed, so that uh, we're all ready now to drill the mounting holes in the corners and mill out the inside. And uh, when we've done that, we've got the steam boxes, uh, and then we have to do the cover. These have already been fly cut and they are precisely the same thickness. Uh, after that then of course we have the, uh, the small uh, valve parts themselves, the nut, the slider and the little threaded rod which connects to the slider connecting rod from the eccentric mechanism. And uh, then after that uh, not much. I've already made the cylinder caps, which of course I keep on forgetting to mention. Uh, we can't finish the uh, machine without putting tops on the cylinders, otherwise uh, nothing's going to work. But anyway, there we are, and uh, I'll continue a bit more. This is the steam box blank, set up in the mill, ready for drilling the four corner holes. Now these need to be the most accurate, uh, as long as the center cutout is not undersized, it's, it doesn't matter as long as the walls are thick enough. So milling out the, the central cavity is not critical, uh, but the holes drilled, they are important. And we'll just start drilling the first hole. We'll just use the center drill to spot it. I'm using a 42 drill for the holes. Uh, a 43 is the correct clearance for a 256, but I'm just increasing the size just a tiny little bit, uh, just to give uh, me a little bit of uh, elbow room. Uh, and that will be adequate. But now I'm going to drill that first hole. You'll notice there is one parallel in. That's merely to make sure it it doesn't twist as I drill the hole, uh, but of course it's placed centrally so that the drill is going to miss it. There's the first hole. And 
now I'm going to drill the last three holes and be very careful about the actual measurement. Uh, the next step after that is the milling out of the cavity. That's the steam chest blank with the four corner holes, mounting holes. Uh, next step is hollow out the interior with a 332 at diameter end drill. I'll drill a hole first in the corner so that the, the end mill doesn't have to struggle to, to pierce the whole thick of that blank. It'll come in and then I'll go round the perimeter and the middle will drop right out. And as I said before, the actual dimensions, as long as the cavity is not undersized, uh, we can be liberal about that. So there's, there's no great concern now. We merely need enough room there for all the moving parts to move about without hitting anything. And there it is with the central cavity milled out. I'll just lap faces and I won't try to deburr or anything. The lapping will take off any burrs and it will leave sharp edges so there won't be any leakage. That's the steam box, two of them. And now we go to some of the fiddly bits and uh, see how we do there. It's all a bit of a laugh. Now we've finished the steam chests and the valve plates. Next step is the little rod uh, for each steam box with uh, a 356 thread in that portion. Uh, this is fairly easy machining, though again you have to be uh, careful. Uh, and the real points are you've got to get the area, the diameter as close a fit to the large hole in the uh, steam chest as possible to minimize any uh, leakage of steam or compressed air. And, and basically the idea is you turn the fine. I've tried doing this on uh, between centers and it just doesn't work. So basically the very small diameter you machine first so that you have as much support for machining this piece from the full diameter of the rod because you're, you're not using a center. And uh, when that's done, turn this diameter to thread it and still use the full diameter. And this is just a close up. You can see the actual movement of these rods is not very much at all. There we are. Here it is temporarily assembled and uh, so you can see how the entire linkage works now with uh, the little rods installed temporarily and uh, you can see the threaded bit on these rods is which will the part that will hold the nut which moves the little valve itself. Uh, once that's in then we can make the one piece cover then the valve gear will be complete except for the uh, inlet and exhaust uh, fittings and then we can get down to putting the cylinder caps on, finishing the cylinder caps, putting them on and finally the linkage for the reversing gear. But you can see now the reversing gear works very well and uh, as long as I've got the timing right, ho ho, I think it's going to work. So there we are for the moment.